That's right, you heard right there. Welcome back to Jeff Kananga Live. Jeff Kananga Live is powered by Johnny Walker, exhibiting its eminence in electrifying quality and is celebrating 200 years of blended scotch excellence. Speaking of excellence, my guest is on the board. He's the chairman of two boards. One, the most profitable company, Banan, in Eastern Central Africa. Let's face it, Safaricom. And the other, well... <laughs> Probably one of the worst performing country companies, but he's still hanging in there. I don't know how he wears these two hats, but Michael Joseph, MJ, uh, he can take a punch or two or three, and he joins us here after Kenya Airways reported 36 billion shillings in losses. Michael, I know the world has taken a hit big time, so globally, in airlines. Yep. It's taken a big hit due to COVID-19. But 36 billion shillings, Michael, that's just, that's ridiculously... Uh, how do you explain that? Well, okay, obviously, you know, it's Kenya Airways, in 2019, we made a loss of 12 billion, and we were projected, and this is the, this is the shocking thing, and we were projected in, in 2020 to make a loss of 6 billion. So we were planning to halve that loss, and, you know, through various initiatives that we had, increasing our revenue, reducing our costs, and streamlining things, and introducing new products, particularly cargo. So, but COVID added 30 billion to that loss. And, you know, what can you do when you're grounded for four months of the year, no revenue, but, you know, in the airline business, you have high fixed costs. You know, those aircraft sitting on the ground, they cost money while they're sitting on the ground. Even, even just sitting on the ground, they cost operational, they cost money. Just you have to keep the engines going, maintaining them. And of course you have your leasing costs, which is sometimes it costs a million, a million dollars a month per aeroplane. So your fixed costs remain high, whether you're flying or not flying. And our variable costs, although we reduced our variable costs, our revenue went down by about 68% compared to the previous year. And our, but our costs only came down by 40% because of this high fixed cost that you have to keep going, whether you like it or not. You know, Kenyans so, are quick to criticize and they say, what is this? Is this mismanagement or what's going on at KQ? Such a big loss. Yeah, you know, it's it's quite hurtful to hear all these things about mismanagement because actually we're not mismanaging. And if you look at the, the task force or the employee base and the management team in Kenya Airways, when most of them took significant salary cuts, 50 to 75 percent salary cuts during this time, um, I don't think I, it's not mismanagement. It's purely, purely that it was a very unlucky thing that, you know, we hit with COVID. The government grounded us for four months of the year and then coming back, there's no confidence in travel. I mean, the number of passengers that we carried in, two, in 2020 was 2 million, just under 2 million, 1.8 million passengers compared to the previous year. So it was 68% down just on passenger numbers. And of course, you know, when passengers at that, uh, you know, with coming at that low level and your fixed costs, it's, it's very difficult to do anything else. I mean, you, you can't say... You could say basically it's out of our it's out of our hands, which is a really unfortunate thing because I believe that you know we were getting we were making progress. I, I think the the charges of mismanagement, um, you know, of course some people can always say that they always do, but I don't think that's justified in any shape or form. Michael, when you compare Kenya Airways with other airlines around the world, how does it compare? How does it rate in terms of the losses? Because I understand there some airlines have lost billions and billions. Well, if you look at the figures in the U.S. carriers, the big carriers, the big legacy carriers, the average loss per aeroplane. When you know, remember they they flying eight six hundred or eight hundred aeroplanes planes in their fleet. The average loss varies from about $12 million per plane to about $16 million per plane. And remember, they have 800, six to 800 planes in their fleet. If you look at the European carriers, which are KLM, Air France, Lufthansa, IAG Group, the same, some are very similar, 12 to $15 million per plane loss. In Kenya Airways, okay, we, we, we don't have so many planes. We managed our losses a little bit better. Our costs weren't as high per plane. We lost about $2 million per plane. In, in terms of our fleet. It's about 200 million shillings plus minus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Good Lord. But, you know, so everybody, I mean, there's not an airline in the world, not a single airline in the world that didn't lose significant sum of money in 2020. Quite a few airlines went out of business, even in our part of the world, Air Mauritius, Namibian Air, uh, South African Airways, uh, all went out of business. So, you know, we're still hanging in there. Well, okay, they're probably not the right description, but we are hanging in there yeah. um, right now. The yeah. question is, how long can we hang in there, Michael? Look, it depends how long this COVID crisis goes on for. You know, the IOT are projecting that we would probably not get back to 2019 levels until 2024. So can we last until 2024? 
That's the big thing. Of course, we need support. We can't do it on our own. We cannot fly our way out of trouble. You know, like we said maybe a few years ago, we can fly our way into, into profitability. That's not possible now. I mean, we do need continued support to keep us going. Or we need to do something dramatically different to what we're doing today. One thing you've always been advocating for, Michael, is nationalizing this airline. You have pushed for that for the longest time. And I think you mentioned it when we had an interview with you back in um, 2019. I think it was November 2019 in, in New York City, mm-hmm. in Central Park. Let's take a listen to what you said about a year and a half ago. Take a listen. Tell, what do you need, Michael? What would it be? Get rid of the board? Have a new board? Give me, give me $450 million. I need. That's it. That's it. Then we don't need to go through this charade, this this process, this nationalisation. Then we have enough uh, resources in which to grow and and to and to grow and to change the whole future of the airline. You but say, there's no 450 million dollars. You say you want 45 billion shillings. You'll turn it around. I won't turn it around, but I will certainly put us on the path of improving ourselves. <laughs> it's a pity you bring back these words. You know, <laughs> quite difficult to do. But that was yeah. 45 billion a year and a half ago. Yeah, yeah. But you know, th- things have changed dramatically mm-hmm. since that time. Even from a nationalisation point of view, you know, we wish we started the nationalisation process back in January last year. Yeah. Okay, it's, it's, it's apparently I read it yesterday or today. I think tonight, it's the, the, the nationalisation bill has been withdrawn for now. It's it's not the answer anymore. It's not the answer. The whole aviation world has changed dramatically. As I said, you know, when we see we recover, it'll take us another three years before we recover. So the whole environment has changed completely. We need to do something different. We have a plan. We have a proposition. Um, but we need uh, n- n- not financial support, but we need support from the government to carry it through. So you're not so keen now on nationalization. You're not big on that move now because the world has changed. Because the world has changed. And, and also we need to think about how, we, as Kenya Airways on our own, we probably could not survive on our own. We need to mm. look at partnerships, partnerships that will help us grow, help us be a much bigger competitor in, against the, the Middle Eastern carriers. So that's what we need to do. We need to, we need to look at it very differently going forward. And we have a plan. As I say, and I think let's see how it goes. Tell me something. Recently, one of the, your uh, Dreamliners was turned into a cargo plane, strictly cargo. Has that been a help? Has that um, changed things much? Look, there's, there's a huge demand for cargo now. And, you know, Kenya Airways, we never had capacity. We had two 737 dedicated cargo carriers, cargo planes, which were used for inter Africa traffic, but they're not big enough. And then, of course, we're carrying a lot of cargo in the belly of the aeroplane, but converting this uh, 787 into a, what they call a Prater, awful word, but uh, that's what they call it, um, into a Prater adds another 40 tons. So you had 50 tons that you can carry in cargo, and that makes a huge difference. And cargo is a solid business. You know, you can fly wherever the demand uh, requires it. Right now, for instance, we're flying Mombasa to Sharjah. You know, carrying uh, f- fish uh, products and things like that. So we're flying to, to China, cargo only. It is a good business. Uh, of course, there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot of demand, but there's also quite a lot of supply. But definitely, it's, it's another way out. And if you look at our figures, in the, the figures that we just announced, you'll see cargo revenues definitely was on the up. And particularly carrying uh, flowers, pharmaceutical products, mm-hmm. uh, and those kind of things, electronics. That's a big deal thing for us. I was about to ask you, pharma, is that also a big it's, business as well? It's a, it's a big business for us. And we, you know, we, have a, we have a special uh, facility at the airport for pharma. We have special fridges and things like that. So these vaccines, for instance, we could transport quite easily. And, of course, the only disadvantage that we have is JKI is, is, is quite high. The airport is quite high. So it's difficult taking big loads out of JKI but bringing them in, say, from the, from the U.S., from China, from Europe. It's, it's, a, it's good business. You talk about JKI being high altitude. What about Addis? Addis is even higher. And, well, yeah, we can't compete with them. No, but they do have some disadvantage being higher than us. I mean, for instance, their flight to New York, for instance, has to do a stopover in Dakar for refueling. We don't have to do that. So we do have some advantages, yeah, for sure. Yeah, is it difficult competing with airlines that are nationally owned, nationally run, Michael? Is it difficult? I, I would say it's not difficult. I think the challenge that we have in Kenya Airways, if I can be frank, and probably not the most popular person in the world, is our, our operating costs are too high. We have to bring down our operating to compete. 
I don't think that's the big thing that the, you compete against national airlines is not such a big thing. But we need to bring our costs down. And, and everybody knows what our costs are high. I mean, it's very public knowledge has been in, in the media. If we get our costs down so we can compete on the par with nationalized airlines like Ethiopian, like Emirates uh, and like Turkish, I think then we have a better chance. So that's a, year, a challenge. That's a challenge, yeah, indeed. A year and a half ago at Central Park, you also mentioned um, a tiny little airline that was probably going to take over Kenya Airways in a little short time. You mentioned Rwanda Airways. Remember we talked about that and the new airport they were building? Do we have that soundbite? Let's take a listen. Because right now in Rwanda, you can see what's happened. The government is 100% behind. The president is personally involved in, the, in, in making sure that Rwanda gets off the ground. It's subsidized heavily by the government. And now they're making a deal with Qatar. Not just making a deal for shareholding into Rwanda, but also in building the new airport. You know, if we are not careful in Kenya, we, the, the hub, East African hub, will move from Nairobi to Kigali. And it's a reality. And it's a reality. And it's going that direction. And, you know, we're watching it happen. And we're saying, oh, yeah, it's very interesting. But, you know, five years' time, we'll wake up and say, you know, I'm being a pessimist now, but I'm saying five years' time, we'll wake up. And if we're not careful, all the traffic will be in Kigali. You weren't being a pessimist. You were actually being a realist. Well, even, to, even just this week, I heard that uh, Qatar Airlines were transferring 60 aircraft from Qatar to Rwanda Air. That's, that's phenomenal. That is a big deal thing. And I was actually talking today to, to a member of parliament and saying, what we have to be careful of is that you know, if we are not careful, the, the business hub for Africa, which Nairobi is ideally designed for, <clears throat> sitting on the equator, great climate, great schools, great place to live, is going to move from Nairobi to Kigali. So the business will move there because of connectivity. If you look at what, what happened to Dubai, Dubai would not be in existence today like it is with so many headquarters and companies if it wasn't for Emirates. Emirates provide the connectivity. And, and similar thing in Addis, building a new airport, building their fleet. Businesses want to be located where they have easy connectivity. Nobody wants to fly you know, via another airport to get to your final destination. So that's why I'm concerned that Kenya Airways not only has to survive, but has to thrive to make sure that we, that we make the conditions right for, for Nairobi to be the business hub for Africa. But then your biggest critics, Michael, they'll turn around and say, oh, you guys just want to take over the airline, you want to take over Kenya Airports Authority. That's what all the critics say. But they don't see the bigger picture, do they? Well, the critics don't understand, and, and, by, and, and they're wrong. We don't want to take over anything. We never even said ever that we want to take over anything. What we said in our initial proposition was the PPP was we want to work together with Kenya Airports Authority for JKA as a, as a, as a merged entity. That's what we said. Even on the nationalization bill, which is not the nationalization bill, but the, the, the aviation bill that in, was, in, was in Parliament, was not to take over anything but to form a, a holding company which, which includes KA and, and Kenya Airways. We never wanted to take over anybody. We know that we are not in a strong financial position. And therefore, what chance do we have? We don't want to suck somebody else's profit to, to fund the airline. What we wanted to do was use the combined balance sheet to leverage that balance sheet to bring funding into both entities. And as you know, the airport needs the funding. The airline needs the funding. That's what we want to do. We won't want to take over anything. And I think the critics are wrong. And I think the critics always look at it because it's easy to criticize. You know, it's the right thing when you're down. You know, I've said, uh, you know, when you're down, you, you shouldn't be kicking that horse that's fallen, fallen down. You should be helping them uh, get up. You're a golfer, right? No. You're not a golfer. I just okay. watched, yeah. I just watched a documentary on Tiger Woods. I, I watched that as well. Did you watch it? Yes, it was on HBO. And and you, uh, it was on TV last night. Yes. I, was, I watched it. And I thought, this is remarkable. This is a man that was written off completely. 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 Couldn't even walk. Had to be helped. Here's a man that just last year won the Augusta National Championship. Now, I'm not a golfer either. But that's, I think that's an analogy that I would like to, to use to say, look, we might be down. We might be struggling. But we still have the ability to come out on top. And maybe I'm an optimist now. <laughs> and maybe in a year and a half you'll show me a clip of, of this interview and say, look what you said. Yeah. But I think, I think we have an opportunity. Do you, Give it a chance. Yeah. Do you think we still have that window, Michael? Because, uh, you know... I look at you and I say, there you are running safari, you're chairman of the board of safari car. I mean, that's, and it, it took a while to get there. Obviously, it, it took a lot of hard work and stuff. But comparing that to where you are, I don't know, either you're schizophrenic, and I told you that in Central Park, or you just love punishment. What is it? 
Look, it's, it's, everybody asks this, this, this question, why don't you walk away? It's the easiest thing to walk away because I'm known for the success of Safaricom, for Impesa, and here I am struggling, and I know that if, if this goes wrong, I will be blamed for it. Whether it's my fault or not, this Mzungu chairman will be blamed for this thing for sure. Um, but I believe I have a, I have a, I have a duty to, to do my best. I won't walk away. Many people have told me, you must be joking. Why did, you've told me that. Yes. Uh, why don't you walk away? No, I think I have a duty to try and do my very best to save the airline for Kenya. And that's why I'm there. Because I, I'm not a glutton for punishment. I don't enjoy it. It's tough. It's really tough. Um, and it's not an enjoyable thing. I'm not a masochist. But it's, I think it's, I, I went to the country to try to do my best. And I think it, it's possible. Um, but when you say you come from, a, from Safaricom, where it's a wealthy company, a most profitable company, all the trappings of success are there, you know, and then you go to Kenya Airways where you possibly can't afford to have a, a free cup of coffee, you know, and things like that, because it's, it's expensive. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's a challenge, but it's something that needs to be done. But is it salvageable? That's what I was looking for, Michael. Can, can, can this company be salvaged? Oh, absolutely, it can be salvaged. Okay, but it needs specific attention. And 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 I, I a slight note of negativism here is that it needs attention, but it needs actual. It needs attention and it needs action. You know, we've been talking about this challenge of Kenya with, for many years, and we talk and we talk and we 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 do little things and we try to help. We put some money in here, we put some money in there, but we need now to take strong action in order to save the airline. It is salvageable. There is a window of opportunity. Uh, obviously, we have, a, we have a hard road ahead of us because, you know, when the passengers will come back, who knows. Um, but it's definitely salvageable. But we need, the, the, need the, the dedicated support and attention from the shareholders, which includes the government. And this is why, and, and of course, the problem is this government has many, many other priorities, you know, covert, uh, vaccines, and, you know, medical, all these many, many things that they have. We just are painful, I nearly said the wrong word. We are really pained for the government, I'm pretty sure. I mean, how many times can you go back to the government and say, help me out, help me out? But it's necessary. And we are not the only ones in this world that need, or only airline that needs help. Every airline in the world, as I said, has been bailed out to some extent by the national governments. All things being equal, Michael, when do you think the friendly skies will open to airlines like proper, proper traffic like it used to be? How soon do you think, with all that digital passport, the health passport that they're asking for, how soon? Look, that's a very difficult question to give an answer to. I mean, depending on vaccination, if, if the vaccine vaccination policy takes, takes, takes hold and we vaccinate like they're doing in the UK, if Europe does more vaccinations, uh, Africa as well, I think we probably, 2022, we'll start to see some growth, but not before. And as I say, passenger numbers re- going back to 20, uh, 2019 levels, probably 2024, because people have lost confidence to travel. Yeah. And it's quite difficult to travel now. I don't know if you've traveled internationally, but, you know, there's lots of things you have to do before you can go anywhere. And you're still traveling. How do you find it? You, is it frustrating just going through the various? Oh, it's, it's irritating. It's frustrating. You have, you know, I'm not I'm not a very patient person. Mm. But, you know, when you have to stand at an immigration desk and you have to give this form, mm. three forms at least when you want to fly to the UK, yeah. you know, and, and you have to stand in line and show it. It's not easy. It's not easy. I mean, uh, the people who are traveling are dedicated travelers, for sure. So we're looking at another maybe two years plus. At least, I think two years. I think it will take some time. Uh, it, 2024 before we get back to 2019 levels. Yeah. Next year, 2022, 2023, of course, next year, unfortunately, is our election here. Yeah. And, and during our election here, we tend to have less traffic. Right. So probably 2023 for us, I think, when we could start to see a, a growth. Yeah. yeah. You're also on the COVID uh, emergency response uh, fun, uh, yeah. Yeah, on mm-hmm. the board. Have you, taken, have you taken the vaccine, by the way? Yes, I've had the vaccine. Yeah. How was it? No problem. No problem. It was I, okay? I had no side effects, so. No side effects. No, no, no side effects. No. All right. Well, yeah. There's a lot of resistance here for some reason. I don't know why. Well, I think there's a lot of misinformation uh, in, uh, about uh, the, particularly the AstraZeneca virus, uh, vaccine. Lots of misinformation, I think. And I think it's, everybody should have it. It, 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 it doesn't matter. It, it, it has, gives you some immunity and everybody should have it. I'm urging, I'm really urging and pushing in my, when I say have something to say, let's get 20 to 30 percent of this population vaccinated. Because until you get to that level... Yeah you're not going to start to see a reduction in the numbers. You can't. Because it doesn't matter if you get vaccinated, I get vaccinated, and they don't get vaccinated. Mm. Yeah. 
it's, you've got to get it. Very good point. Yeah. I'm still waiting for my name to be called, but uh, hopefully one of these days. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Michael Joseph is our guest tonight, folks. I know you have a lot of questions and comments. Please continue that right now. We're going to take a quick break. Come back. Plenty more ahead. Twitter handle is at Queen Anger Jeff at Citizen TV. Can you the hashtag? Check it live. Check it live. Take a break. We'll be back in a moment.